Canada. He is known as one of the greatest Toronto Maple Leafs of all time. Johnny Bauer spent 11 seasons in the crease for the Leafs, picking up some pretty impressive hard way along the way and getting his name engraved on hockey's holy grail four times with the franchise. The legend grew even larger in retirement and lives on today through memories and moments, including this new book, Bauer, A Legendary Life. Author Dan Robson joins us this morning to share his story. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. I want to get into your own personal story because when you were a kid, your aunt gave you a picture of Johnny Bauer and you took that everywhere you go. I mean, university, every new apartment. That must have been surreal for you, especially since you talked with Johnny Bauer's family. Yeah, it's kind of a, a universal story with Johnny Bauer. Um, so many fans that didn't even see him play interacted with him in some way. And when I was a kid, uh, I had this sort of this painting that I was given that he signed to Danny, my childhood name. Jeez. Uh, and and it, it meant a lot to me at the time. He was sort of this, this larger than life legend that I kind of heard about from the past. Um, and as I sort of pursued my own hockey dreams, he was a big part of it as I sort of, you know, looked at him from afar and wondered what he was about. Mm -hmm. um, and that, I've carried that with me sort of ever since because it meant a lot. I think it represents kind of what Johnny meant to so many people long after his playing days were done. Uh, it's sort of that connection he made with fans, um, you know, despite being a legend. It's, you're so right. His name is so recognizable mm -hmm. to so many people. You hear it and you feel this sense of, you know, pride, I guess. But Bauer isn't his original name. Right. Yeah, so there's a lot of uh, mystique that also carried along with Johnny's life throughout his time. So issues like how old he actually was. His last name was actually John Kishkan, which he changed after he returned from the Second World War. Wow. So a lot of this book was about going back and, and sort of uncovering some of the details that Johnny didn't really discuss a lot and told several different stories about throughout his career. So it was sort of about unraveling all of that. Can you talk to us more about his humble beginnings? Because it's something I'm sure many people didn't know about. Yeah, so Johnny grew up in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, uh, kind of with the Great Depression era. Uh, very difficult time, obviously, especially in Saskatchewan. Uh, he came from uh, parents who had emigrated from, uh, from Eastern Europe, and they were homestead farmers, eventually found their way into Prince Albert, and made their living just sort of through uh, whatever work they could find. So Johnny didn't have much. He, um, he basically learned the game, uh, like you hear these stories all the time, but you know, with a twig playing on, a, on frozen, pond, or frozen ponds and rivers throughout Prince Albert. So yeah, it was a, it was a difficult time, and it really set up the stage for the kind of man Johnny would be later on. Yeah, because he made his own homemade hockey equipment. Yes. You can do that? <laughs> well, I, they could. Apparently at the time, they had nothing else to put on his legs. So in order to not uh, be bruised and marked all the time, they, put, uh, they cut up an old mattress, mm -hmm. uh, a child's crib mattress, and tied it to their legs, him and his neighbor. And they shot uh, frozen horse manure at each other. Um, oh my goodness. Yeah, regularly, just to, just to practice. And that's how we learned to play the game. I mean, it's a long way away from how kids play, learn to play the game today. Old school prairie life. Yeah. Let's talk about Johnny Bauer's relationship with Gordy Howe, because before they were in the NHL, facing off against, you know, with each other, they were actually fishing buddies. Yeah, so they're both, um, they're both Saskatchewan sort of hockey buddies. Uh, Johnny, or Gordy grew up just outside of Saskatoon, Johnny and Prince Albert, but in that very small uh, world of, of hockey, especially in Saskatchewan, um, they just sort of connected through the years. Johnny was uh, actually a bit older, mm -hmm. but um, they, they became buddies even when Johnny wasn't uh, famous yet. Johnny was playing in the, in the minor leagues in the Cleveland Barons at the time, but they would uh, connect in Waska Sioux, mm -hmm. and there they would go fishing together and became good buddies for years long before they actually um, they became uh, buddies. Actually, Gordy's first goal um, in, in an exhibition game for the Detroit Red Wings was against Johnny when they were, they were playing against the Cleveland Barons mm -hmm. before the season. So it was kind of neat. And actually, in the end of the book, I discussed uh, Johnny going to Gordy's funeral um, and, and it, obviously how difficult that was for him. But it's sort of their lifelong friendship was a thread that I tried to explore throughout this. Speaking of lifelong relationships, we cannot talk about Johnny Bauer without talking about his wife, Nancy. And in the book, you write, she was the force behind his life. He loved her madly through seven decades. They still danced together in the kitchen and watch Leafs games side by side in matching chairs in their living room. You spent time with Nancy talking with her. What was that like? Uh, it was an incredible honor for me to sit with Nancy. I mean, Nancy was sort of the, the heart of the family. She was the center of everything. She was that person that supported Johnny for all those years through all of his, um, his journey to the NHL. I mean, he played an entire career basically in the minors before even making it to the Leafs at 34. So getting to sort of speak with, with her and learn about her incredible spirit and well, and she's also quite funny. She's very witty. She told great stories. So we had a, a real, um, you know, a great time together, just spending time reminiscing about uh, what Johnny had meant to their family. This was a few months after he passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she was uh, incredibly generous just to share those memories with me. And she's, uh, you know, she's someone I still hope to go and have a, a cup of tea with because she was uh, just a wonderful woman. And really quickly, Johnny has a park named after him 
And even in his retirement, he went to go clean it up. Yeah. Uh, well, Johnny was named after him. It's a couple like street houses down from where he lives in Mississauga. Yeah. Uh, and he had this sort of sense of duty. I mean, that's anyone who knew Johnny knew that he carried this, uh, this idea that you know, even though he was a star, he would be the guy that was going to go pick up garbage in a park, especially after it was named after him. Yeah. Uh, and then he had to sort of go along and say, well, I'm going to take care of this. So, what an uh, authentic guy. Dan, thank you so much for being here. We really appreciate it. Here's the book. Get, grab it. It's really good. Thank you so much.